Why did Prophet Muhammad marry Aisha the young girl part 2? Part 6 Is it logical to judge a marriage case that took place before 1,400 years under the laws of the first century? After demonstrating the age of consent for the American girl, which was until the last part of the 19th century just 10 years i.e. one year older than Aisha when she married the Prophet peace be upon him before 13 centuries. Moreover, such age was just seven years in one of the American states i.e. two years younger than Aisha may Allah be pleased with her. And having demonstrated that the age of consent is still ranging between 12 to 13 years in most countries of the world, including Western and Christian countries. Accordingly, there is no ground to criticize the marriage of the Prophet peace be upon him, and Aisha may Allah be pleased with her which was portrayed by the instigators as an offense against young girls. Such instigators exploited the ignorance of the Western community about the age of consent in the West and the non-Muslim countries in order to instigate against Islam and portray the Prophet of Islam peace be upon him as an offender. Such instigators are in fact hypocrite people because they are accusing the Muslims with things practiced legally and normally by non-Muslims. In brief, the early marriage still exists in the 21st century, and it is practiced by European and Christian people in the 21st century. Therefore, why is the Prophet of Islam peace be upon him blamed for such marriage which took place before 1,400 years? This clearly demonstrates the non-credibility of such instigators and their hidden aims under the pretext of defending the rights of women and the human rights in order to gain the sympathy of the Western people toward Aisha the child who was, obliged, to marry a man more than 50 years old, as they allege. However, apart from the instigation of such criticizers who have concealed their actual aims, we would like to demonstrate some points about the marriage of the Prophet of Islam peace be upon him, and Aisha may Allah be pleased with her when she was nine years old. In order to understand the reasons and circumstances of such marriage, did they know the Arabian Peninsula before 14 centuries? It is worth mentioning that the Western principles and mentality in the 21st century may not understand the Eastern and Arabian principles and mentality in the 6th century fully and completely. There is a wide gap between the two cultures, mentalities, and geographies. This is an important point which should be recognized. Because judging a norm practiced by an Eastern community before 14 centuries by a secular Western culture in the 21st century won't be just or accurate. Therefore, the Western people in this era should study such norm and understand the reasons which justify it. Anyway, such reasons are still convincing the Western and Christian communities which do not oppose the early marriage until today. Part 7 Brides in Africa are younger than 10? In order to make the picture clearer to the Western people in the 21st century, let's compare between a 9-year-old girl in America and a 9-year-old girl in some countries in Africa nowadays. The American girl used to live a modern easy life with all means of entertainment, joy and luxury, while the African girl, in some of the black-skinned countries, used to shepherd sheep. Bring water from wells several kilometers far from her house, no cocking, clean the house, participate in the agricultural works, and carry out other tasks just like the older people in spite of her childhood. These responsibilities make the African girl in the 21st century an intellectually mature girl who is able to run her own affairs when her family is not at home. However, the American or European girl is living a modern easy life and do not bear such heavy responsibilities. She has a babysitter if her family is not at home. Moreover, the African girl in the above-mentioned example can take care of the Western girl in spite of their equal ages. So, how about the Arab girl before 14 centuries? The Arab girl then was living in circumstances similar to the African girl in terms of tasks and responsibilities. The Arab girl at 7 and 8 years, since 14 centuries, was fully mature and responsible just like the African girl in the above-mentioned example. Therefore, she cannot be considered similar to the Western girl who has no responsibilities. Accordingly, the Western people should not compare the circumstances of the Western girl in the 21st century with the circumstances of the Arab girl before 14 centuries. Because any judgment like this will be inaccurate, and not just in the best cases. Moreover, the Western people should take into consideration that the body of the girl in the hot regions reaches maturity before the girls in the cold regions. The femininity of the girl in the hot regions appears before the femininity of girls in the cold regions. Therefore, she will be qualified for marriage in early age. This is exactly the case in the Arabian Peninsula before 14 centuries. The environment of the Arabian Peninsula makes the girls mature in early age, contrary to the environment of Europe and America. Therefore, there is no way for the criticizers to compare. 
This fact was realized by the English Orientalist R.V.C. Bodley, grandson of Sir Thomas Bodley, the founder of Bodley Library, author of Wind in the Sahara, The Messenger, and other fourteen books, after visiting the Arabian Peninsula. He said after such visit, Aisha, though was young, was mature and grew up quickly like the other Arab women. Such early marriage still exists in Asia and East Europe, and is a natural habit in Spain and Portugal until recently. R.V.C. Bodley, The Messenger, P. 129, Arabic version. The English author added, Since she entered the house of Muhammad peace be upon him all people felt her presence, and if there was a girl knowing fully what is marriage, Aisha will be such girl. She has built her character since the first day of her life in the house of the Prophet peace be upon him which was attached to the masjid. R.V.C. Bodley, The Messenger, P. 130, Arabic version. Part 8. It is not for satisfying a desire. It is following a good advice and wishing for enhancing relations with a dear friend. The marriage of the Prophet peace be upon him with Aisha may Allah be pleased with her was not his own idea. It was an opinion by a woman called Kala bint Hakim, for the purpose of enhancing relations with the dearest friend of the Prophet peace be upon him i.e. Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Father of Aisha may Allah be pleased with them by way of affinity. Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him was one of the pillars of Islam and was the closest friend to the Prophet peace be upon him. He was the first orthodox caliph after the death of the prophet peace be upon him. It is worth mentioning here that the marriage of Aisha was made upon an advice by a woman i.e. such opinion means that such marriage was conforming to the customs and traditions of society and that such woman did not find such marriage a breach to the rights of Aisha or confiscating her freedom as alleged by the hypocrite people. Anyway, the prophet peace be upon him did not wish to reject marriage with Aisha the daughter of the dearest friend. His loyalty to his friend, Abu Baker, made him pleasant to accept the offer in order to enhance relations between them. It is worth mentioning also that Aisha, before marrying the Prophet peace be upon him, was engaged to another man, Jubair bin Mutham bin Aday. I.e. marriage in an early age was a norm and a custom widely prevailing in such era and no one denied or objected it. Moreover, after marriage, Aisha gained a high rank in the Prophet's life. The Prophet peace be upon him was asked, Who is the dearest person in your life? He said Aisha. He was asked, Who is the dearest person from men? He answered, Her father, Sunan at Termithai. Hadith number 3886-17 Therefore, the marriage of the Prophet peace be upon him with Aisha was not for the purpose of satisfying desires as portrayed by some people. Contrary, it was done for several purposes. If the Prophet peace be upon him was seeking desires, he would not then, while being twenty-five years old, marry Khadija who was fifteen years older than him, and would not refrain from marriage until her death. Moreover, if he was seeking desires, he would not, after the death of Khadija, marry an old woman eighty years old, Sada bin Zame al amariah who became a widow after her husband's death. The Prophet wanted to console her and to be an example for all Muslims in doing good deeds for the widows. Anyway, the marriage of the Prophet peace be upon him with Aisha in such early age produced great benefits to Islam and Muslims. Being young, Aisha was able to learn and keep the principles of Islam from the Prophet peace be upon him quickly. Therefore, she gained wide knowledge in religion and became a reference for the old and young companions concerning the Holy Quran, jurisprudence, interpretation, and the prophetic traditions. She was one of the greatest scholars in jurisprudence, and was for the companions like a teacher. They were asking her about all things in Islam, and she delivered one-fourth of the Islamic teachings, Aisha and politics. By Al-Afghani P.16 The Prophet peace be upon him has qualified Aisha to be a good source and reference for the Muslims after him. Aisha was a young, clever, and bright woman with a strong memory. Therefore, the Prophet peace be upon him was confident that she will keep the great Islamic heritage assigned to her. The revelation was coming down to the Prophet peace be upon him every time he is in the house of Aisha only. This was an indication to her for focusing on understanding the great mission of her husband in order to perform her role in guiding the Muslims. The Muslims in the reign of Abu Bakr, Omar, Othman, Ali and Emoyah may Allah be pleased with them learned a lot from her and the scholars were consulting her in the religious issues. She remained a reference for the Muslims and a source for teaching them their religion. Mr. Said al-Afghani said, I have spent several years studying Lady Aisha may Allah be pleased with her. I found myself in front of a miracle and did not find the right description for her. She has vast knowledge, diversity of specializations and several fields of experience. 
jurisprudence, prophetic traditions, interpretation, juristic science, morals, poetry, medicine. History She has mastered all such fields before being 18. Aisha and Politics by Al Afghani P.1819. Part 9. Let's pause here. It is important to know that the instigators who exploited this marriage to harm Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him have relied on the ignorance of people about the details of such marriage and tried to gain the sympathy of the Western people toward Aisha as if she was an American girl in the 21st century and was deprived of her childhood, while the actual facts are totally different. It is not logical to compare the American or Western girl in the 21st century with an Eastern Arabian girl before 1,400 years. This is totally illogical because it is misleading and causing misunderstanding reality. Therefore, it will lead to misjudgment. If such criticizers want the Prophet peace be upon him before 14 centuries to marry according to the American or Western customs in the 21st century, it is then their own affair. They cannot impose their own principles on generations preceding them several hundreds of years. It is not logical to issue judgments on the old generations according to circumstances which they did not live or participate or establish. Moreover, such criticizers did not compare the marriage of the Prophet peace be upon him and Aisha may Allah be pleased with her with the realty and customs of several Western and Christian countries after hundreds of years and did not compare it with the marriage in the Jewish religion which allowed the marriage of a child when she attained three years and one day only. Therefore, this demonstrates the incredibility of such criticizers and discharges the Prophet peace be upon him from their fabricated allegations and falsifications. It is worth mentioning here also that several prophets peace be upon them were very old and married young virgin girls. The Bible mentioned that Dawood, David, peace be upon him was old and caught cold, and was not able to warm himself in spite of wearing heavy clothes. Kings 1, the first chapter stated, when King David was old and well advanced in years, he could not keep warm even when they put covers over him. So his servants said to him, Let us look for a young virgin to attend the king and take care of him. She can lie beside him so that our lord the king may keep warm. Then they searched throughout Israel for a beautiful girl and found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. It is a very clear picture. Prophet Dawood David, peace be upon him, was very old. However, they searched for him a virgin girl tens of years younger than him in order to keep him warm. Such verses are speaking about sexual meanings such as warming Prophet Dawood peace be upon him using a young beautiful virgin girl, as stated in the verses. So, why don't such people who instigate against Islam look at this issue and consider it rape? Why don't the Western media speak about such event the way they speak about the marriage of the Prophet peace be upon him and Aisha? The reason is simple. The purpose of such criticism is not such marriage cases or relationships. Contrary, they are seeking to distort the picture of Islam only instigating against it, and making people hate this religion and its followers. But the truth will appear someday, and people will surely discover the malicious goals and methods of such instigators.